indicates that they're going to go opposite in which they do. They're going to let their passing game set up things because I know Orlando was waiting for a run the first play. Illegal use of the hands. Number 81 on the offense. So they caught Fitzky. It's things like that that make you 5-6-1. and one. I'll tell you, Coach Moore, he's got to be a little bit displeased because it brings up a, a first and long, and that really is a passing situation. And, and uh, Philadelphia is not, excuse me, Baltimore is not a passing team. They like to establish their running game. Defensively, Orlando looks this way. They'll run the 4-3 with David Graham and Joe Urban the tackles. The defensive ends, Kevin Kellen and Scott Hutchinson. Hutchinson, the king of the sack for this Orlando club. We'll set the linebackers in the secondary for you in a moment. First down. Right, with the fumble. It's still loose. the game are usually what sets the tone of the game and with Orlando can create some momentum which we got last week from the from the win over uh, over San Antonio this first play that uh, the Kevin Bryant he just lost his concentration the ball just slipped through his hand and it should have jumped on it immediately but uh, the, the Renegades come up with it and I think they have the momentum with the crowd behind them if they can take the lead it's gonna put the stars at a disadvantage they won with the big play two or three times last week in the first half I should say this week it was just Monday only four days ago. Let's see what happens here. Ball is marked at the 11 yard line out of the shotgun. Bledsoe, the intended receiver, there to provide coverage George Jameson. And we have markers down. Tim, I like the Renegades' attitude. They come out passing and they want to put some points on the board early. If they can do that, they can put the stars at a distance. 12 men on the field, on the defense. So far, the stars have been falling. In Florida. And Mora looking on and he can't be too happy with what he's seen to this juncture. Offensively, Orlando has Jerry Durger at center, Ed Fulton and Tom Dornbrook for the guards, Ed Moransky and Joel Patton are the tackles, Bob Nazolik the top end, Joey Walters and Jackie Flowers are the wide receivers, Collier with Leon Perry and Curtis Bledsoe in the backfield. Reception. He really reached out with both hands and pulled the ball in with his hands. That is the way to start a football game. As you watch on the replay, Reggie Carter just rolls out and he has the option to run or pass. At the beginning, I thought he was going to run, but he saw the guy open in the end zone, put the ball perfectly where it's supposed to be, and that's six points for Orlando. That's the way to start a ball game, Tim. Flowers has not been up and down this year. He did have a touchdown the other night, and he has another big one here, that last one. On Monday was a 45-yarder. Brockhouse with the extra point. He hasn't missed one all year, and he's true to four. The Floridians are happy here in the Sunshine State. As the sun goes down, their team moves up and leads by seven. So Brockhouse again will kick off. Alan Harvin along with R.L. Harris are back with Mark McCann. They're waiting to kick. But you know, Tim, as I was stating before, the first five minutes of a contest is very essential because you've got to set the tone of the game, as I mentioned earlier. And I think Orlando came out with a physical attitude and uh, created their own mistakes. And as a good team always does, you've got to capitalize on the turnover. So that's why it's 7-0 right now. The wind had gusted up, so they're having to hold the ball from Brockhouse to boot it. And can't has it a yard deep in his end zone. Nailed at the 20-yard line by Albert Gray. 
So if you see it trots onto the field again, hoping to get off the play without a penalty. Last week, 10 of 25, under 100 yards. His worst game as a pro, three interceptions. In fact, this club only garnered 196 yards against the Generals. In a game they needed badly. It got away. They need this one even worse. The backs are split behind the seat. Riley gets it. He is hammered to the ground. Bernard West made the stop. Harold Randolph, I beg your pardon. Randolph inserted as a starter, and you're high on this guy. I really like him because he reminds me a little bit of Ted Hendricks of the Raiders because he's got long arms, and he's able to ward off blockers with those long arms. He's been out a little while with injuries, and now that he's back, I think he's going to make an impact in this ball game, Tim. Second down, 12 yards to go. We'll set the linebackers in secondary for you at all, but a turnover has resulted prior to our giving an opportunity to tell you about the Orlando defense. They lead it 7-0. Plenty of time for Fusina and Collier and Collier dropped it as he hit the turf. Willie Collier lost it over Gray in hot pursuit defensively, but Collier had his hand on it. But you know, he had plenty of time to throw, and I was kind of shocked that uh, Fusina threw the ball with, with no pain in his arm. As a matter of fact, the receiver really should have had the ball because he had both hands on the ball. The defensive man was not really a factor. And really, uh, Fusina, I thought he was going to be a factor as far as his arm not being able to release the ball as hard. But look, none of that. But right now, this is third and long. That's a bad situation for the Stars. Ron Freeman, Kelvin Atkins, Harold Randolph, the linebackers, Jeff George, Albert Gray, the corners, Victor Jackson, and Ruby Sanchez are the safeties. Third and long, and he goes long, and it's incomplete. Victor Harrison had a couple of steps on Mike Guess in the nickel defense. And Fusina had plenty of stuff on that long pass. I tell you, I, I'm really shocked because during the week of practice, I really felt that Fusina's arm was a factor. But right there, he showed that people are going to have to deal with his passing today. Sean Landano will put it away. Victor Jackson back deep. The Orlando Renegades already with a seven-point lead. That's Monday, May 20th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. on the Pacific Coast. Coast, and this could be one that goes from the one-yard line to the post as the Gamblers take on the Bulls. From the 50, Collier loads up his gun and finds Walter. As we were talking about, Tim, in the beginning of the game, Reggie Carter is showing levels of improvement from week to week. He, st he stood in the pocket very strong and delivered a really nice bullet, and that's exactly what they're going to have to do to win this game. Mike Lush made the stop. You know, Tim, uh, the Stars have always been a hard team to run on, and I guess Orlando feels that way because they have not, as of yet, run the ball. Collier, as you see there, has had the ability to get free, make some yardage on his own. He'll freelance back there from time to time. He has a first and ten at the Stars' 25-yard line. The out pattern is complete to the tight end, Don Eccles. Rush again makes the stop, and markers go down. Tim, what I like about that play is that as I saw a blitz come in, and Reggie read the blitz very well, and you can see him coming as of age of a quarterback. Hey, man. He read it very quickly and delivered it quickly. Well, he finally got possession of it, but when he did, he was out of bounds, they say. Garcia Lane was covering. Once again, uh, the Stars came with the blitz. Usually when a team is in the in the plus territory, that's when they usually blitz. Uh, Reggie read it very well again, delivered a, a nice pass. As you see on the end of this play, uh, the ball really should have been caught, but I think he bobbled it with a great effort, and then he, he was out of bounds on the reception. It was a nice effort by Joey Walters, who is nursing a bad ankle. Ten minutes and 43 seconds are left in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Orlando. And it's second and ten, Collier rolling. And it's incomplete. It was going for Bledsoe. Bill Hardy there to provide the coverage. Hardy pressed into duty with the injury to Antonio Gibson out of Cincinnati. What? The Stars have bunged up on both sides of the line of scrimmage. As a matter of fact, uh, Bill Hardy took Antonio Gibson's place, and he's a newcomer in the lineup. But he made a great play on that one to show you the depth that the Stars do have. Interesting call coming up here on third and ten. It's going to 
be careful here, Tim, because he at least has a field goal, so he cannot risk an interception. Jerry Parrish is in motion there. Walker saying, how did it? It's complete. It's a little short of the first down. It's going to be close, though. Watch Walters. He really just does a quick out, really short out pattern. And the ball is delivered just as he turns around. The timing pattern was very good. He may have the first down depending on the marking. Great catch by Joey Walkers, a great competitor. One of the all-time leading receivers in the USFL. Now, you know Lee Corso like I know Lee Corso. And if he doesn't have the first down, he's got to go for he's it. He's got to right? go for it. But see, you're in scoring territory. You've got to either come away with at least three points, Tim. Oh, so we may have uh, a differing opinion here then, <laughs> perhaps. Well, I, I'd take the three points if I could, but it looks like it could. No, it's short. What would you do, Tim? I would take the three points. I'd listen to you. Or so it's got to go. I guess if you were three and nine, maybe uh, you'd go for it too. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But I would take the points. I'm not arguing with him as a coach. Lee Corso is trying to rally this community behind him. They're three and nine. They do have a healthy crowd on hand with the state of this club from a W's and L standpoint. And you win over fans with plays like these. But then the stars are very good against the run, though, Tim. That's what I'm scared of. I take the 10 0 lead and make the stars have to score at least twice to be back in the game. Mazolik is in the game. Eccles is in the game. I give it to Leon Perry. If you watch it, he, the offensive line just literally blows him out, and all he does is run over. He ran right over Tom Dornbuck and Ed Moransky, and they didn't even get touched in the end zone. It's one of the very few times you see Sam Mills get pushed back. He didn't even have a chance. He's one of the best linebackers, but the offensive line, the, the, the forwardness of them just propelled uh, Leon Perry to get into the end zone literally untouched. Great job of the offensive line. Punctuates it, and with not four minutes gone in the first quarter, the Renegades are on a roll. They lead the Stars 14 to nothing. So, just a few miles from here, that Tampa Bay and Memphis game should be a great one. You look at the standings here, and you can certainly see where Baltimore will have to be keeping a watchful eye on that game with their 5 6 and 1 record. Tampa Bay 9 and 3, and Memphis 7 and 5. So Memphis almost in a must-win situation on the road as well. 14 to nothing here, Orlando leading. And McCants is again deep in his end zone. Spilled at about the 23-yard line. And Chuck Fusina looks on. Getting some words of encouragement. Jeff Gabrielson made the stop for the Orlando Renegade. Tim, now is when Baltimore has got to show that they are a championship caliber team. They've got to come back and retaliate right now. This is what Orlando wanted. This is just the scenario Lee Corso had orchestrated. He wanted to get an early lead, and he has it. Kelvin Bryant has about four. Kelvin Atkins. Along with James Scott, the right tackle from Clemson made the stuff. As you look at the right side of the uh, Stars offensive line, they got three off pros led by uh, fullback David Riley, and that's why uh, Kevin Bryant picked up four yards. It was just a surge of uh, a very conservative play just to uh, keep him honest. Second down, six yards to go. That's Ken Dunnick in motion, and Bryant follows it. made the stop in his fourth year out of Minnesota. Now we have Marcus down. Tim, you've got to admire Baltimore for not really getting too scared early because they could have easily started putting it up right away, but they elected to stay with their bread and butter and run the ball. Holding, number 50 on the offense. Personal foul, number 21 on the defense. Decline, second out. There's Bart Oates, the guilty party. 
what happened is that he, it was 68, he was holding 68, he had his left arm out. Wow. He was holding David Graham and he had his left arm out. And I think that the, the, the inside judge was able to see it and he was lucky that, uh, that the penalty was negated. Second down and six, 9 9 to play in the first quarter, and Orlando leading by a couple of touchdowns. You've seen it. That's Dunnick, the tight end. Knocked out of bounds, just shy of 35 by Lupe Sanchez. Dunnick is playing for Steve Folsom, who's been out with injury. But we could go on and on about the problems that have beset this Stars team by injuries, but Jim Moore. Or uh, quarterback Chuck Fusina would tell you they're not using it as an excuse. They still can play better than they've been playing. Ryan is stopped by Scott Collin. Just past the 35 at the 36. But you know, Tim, I like the poise that the Stars are displaying right now because they're behind by two touchdowns, but they're staying with their game plan. I think that really implements uh, a championship-type team. Fusina's arm looks really good, so I think they're, they're really not out of this ball game yet. Second down and seven. O'Reilly and Bryant are the setbacks. You see it. Goes to Bryant. And he turned Randolph inside out to get the first down. That one to Kevin Bryant is so dangerous. You watch in the replay. As he gets the ball coming out of the back, there's just a short little pattern as he turns around. And he knows where the first down marker is. You watch him do a nice little move, spin back in, and pick up the first down. That is really a great moment. He knew where the first down marker was. Melvin Bryant, 1,400 yard season after 1,400 yard season. That's in a bit of jeopardy this year. Five man truck for Orlando. Randolph got revenge there. In his fifth year out of East Carolina. The Pirates taketh away there. He's a favorite among the Orlando Renegades because he plays hard even in practice, and, and some of that rubs off on his teammates. He's been injured the last few weeks, but he's a competitor. And you watch, he'll be around the ball all the time, Tim. Second down and nine yards to go. It's a second along once again. Fitzky up at the top of your screen. Luffy Sanchez is coming. He went right by if you see it. Though he missed him, it certainly botched the play, didn't it? Pacina well, did a great job of getting the ball off. Uh, Luffy Sanchez really, really should have had him. They had a six-man front, if you watch it, and Pacina was lucky to be able to get the ball off because he really had him. And that's really the mark of a good quarterback, is just being able to get rid of the ball. Uh, David Graham was in on the play and, uh, and put the pressure on Pacina. Batted the ball to a certain extent. It fell incomplete. It's third and nine. The ball at the 46. So this is another situation with the Stars are not used to. Third and long once again. Hussein is going. And he finds Fitzky, his favorite target out of Penn State in his eighth year. And he has the first down. Victor Jackson made the stop. Here is the typical star. Offense at work. Oh, it's really just a really about a 12-yard pattern. Uh, Fitzy knew, really knew where the where the uh, first down marker is, and Fusina threw it with authority, put the ball right on the money, and Fitzy did a nice job of picking up extra yards after he caught it. 17 yards on the pickup for the first down. The ball at the 37 now of the Renegades. 6:25 to play in the first quarter. We're happy you joined us here on ESPN. Fusina or Fitzy. If you watch Fitzky, uh, he really had the quarterback beat, but the safety does his job and keeps the receiver on the inside. Uh, Jeff George knew he had help to the inside. Victor Jackson played the ball perfectly, made a great catch over the shoulder, and the Renegades have their second turnover, turnover of the game. So they take over with a first and ten and the ball at their 20-yard line. Jackson who says he's playing for love and not money, and Lee Corso loves that. Chuck Fusina. Once again victimized, 
in a passing situation on a third and long. 14 to nothing Orlando. Collier or Walters long. But Tim, the good thing about this play, even though the fans are mad because they thought it might have been a little bit of pass, pass uh, interference, but it stretches the defense. It means that it allows the defense to have to play the whole field, and that means that the, the offense can throw in front of the defensive guys because they have stressed them on the long play. Even though they didn't complete it, they stretched the defense. They made the defense have to play the whole field. As you watch the end of the play, it's not passing the fans because the defensive guy had the inside and the ball was clearly not catchable. Second down and 10 with the ball at the 20. Bledsoe lost it and it was nearly picked off by Garcia Lane and had he come up with it a half step or so, it would have been six for Baltimore. Tim, the Renegades have yet to run the ball and I think that is definitely their game plan is to throw the ball, but they're going to have to do something pretty soon because they got to keep the clock going because they got to lead. I can't recall a running play with the exception of Leon Perry when you called it, Coach. <laughs> That's right. On the touchdown, there was one running play. It was a fourth down situation also. Jackie Flowers down at the bottom of your screen. Jeff Smith is also in the game with a slot. On third and ten. Smith, the intended receiver, Bill Hardy was there. And it's a punt formation now for the best punter in the United States Football League, at least to this point. And it will be the first time the Stars should come up with good field position. There you see the numbers on Greg Cater. 39 is his net average on the year, which is incredible. Back deep, Garcia Lane, averaging 10 yards per punt return. And he is dangerous, Tim. Tim if, he, if he gets a little bit of room, he can make something happen. Cater on the move. He got some pressure. He's got the first down and then some. Knocked out of bounds finally at the 45. And you have to wonder if that was designed or if, in fact, Cater had the open door. He had the green light if he saw the defense go back. That really is a mental error on the defense. It looked like maybe he had a little bit of a high snap or something. And maybe he looked and saw what was happening. He saw a guy coming in, giving him pressure. It looked like he might have passed the ball. He tucked it away and he picked up a great gain. And that is a big play. That's what the Renegades have been doing all year is creating big plays. And that's a great play. Gives the ball back and allows them to keep the ball some more. There's Cater, a prolific punter and now runner. They'll be teasing him about that one for some time. James Caver was the oncoming star that was playing hide and seek with Cater. And he lost that battle. First and ten. Bledsoe with his first carry of the evening. A couple of yards. George Cooper, the right outside linebacker, making the stop. Setting this star defense, William Fuller and Don Fielder are the, the ends. Three-man line. You see Bledsoe's numbers. Buddy Moore is the nose tackle. That is exactly why Reggie Collier is dangerous, because he has great speed, great moves in the open field, and that is why you must contain Collier. Jonathan Sutton made the stop. If you watch him, Tim, he steps up in the pocket really nice, and he sees that he has a nice area to go, so he just tucks it away, and he has great speed. He should tuck that ball away, though. But he goes down really good like a quarterback should, and he does his nice little hook slide. Just last week, only one yard, but he more than made up for that in the air with two bombs and a consistent drive that led to a touchdown run at the end of the first half, and that was really all Orlando needed to win that game. Bledsoe following Perry, and it's botched up. Mills, Garcia Lane, Don Fielder, the right defensive end. Felder out of Kentucky. Jim Morrow with hands folded, and you have to wonder what else can go wrong when you're in that position. Tim, he's got to be concerned now because his football team must win this game if they're going to get back in the playoffs. Well, he expressed a great deal of concern to you and I when we talked with him yesterday, and you could tell that he really didn't have a lot on what to expect with his team, and that's the worst position that any head coach can be in. I think that's the first time in a couple years where he did not know how his team was going to play today. Second down and nine, the ball at the 41 of Baltimore. Reverse, Parrish. 
He got something out of a play that for a moment looked like it would go plenty and then looked for another moment like it would go nowhere. RD knocked him out of bounds. But you know, Tim, Orlando is not holding back. They're coming out with everything they have, and they came out passing. They come back with a reverse. Uh, there really wasn't much there, but Paris showed a little bit of a running ability in, in picking up the few yards he did get. He's a great open field runner, has great vision, and still he picks up as many as he, as he could. Nice, nice game, really, because there was nothing there, Tim. Corso, who took Louisville. A program that was down to the top at one time back in the 70s did the same thing with the Hoosiers at Indiana. Now trying to do the same with an expansion club here in the USFL. Bledsoe fumble. It's loose, still loose, and finally recovered by Mills, it appears. It is Mills that comes up with a recovery. And Mora finally has something to cheer about. Perhaps the pendulum has finally swung his way. With two minutes and 50 seconds left in the first quarter. Riley dropped it. Probably a good idea. Consider that Graham was there. Freeman was there. And a horde of other guys in blue shirts. Second and ten coming up. But see, Tim, a positive note to that is that, is that the Stars really have come out with a good attitude. That was a great play to start with. They really are down 14 to nothing. And the screen play is, is a good play to start with. Adding insult to injury, Willie Collier, we understand, is lost for the remainder of the game. He has ruptured his clavicle. It happened on the second series. Four-man front for Orlando, and Riley goes right through it. Victor Jackson finally made the stop along with Lupe Sanchez. Harold Randolph also in on the action. Sanchez, though, in defense of Orlando's defense, if you will, is one of these guys that can really jam it up and be an extra linebacker. He's very active. He's a hitter. But, you know, to be a defensive back, especially a safety to come up against the run, you've got to have a, a strong mental attitude. You've got to be almost kind of crazy. And Lupe Sanchez fits that mold perfectly, too. They're down in a yard to go for Baltimore. He was the player of the game. They gave him the game ball on Monday. The Floridians are happy right now with the state of affairs. First and 10 Orlando at the 17. Bledsoe finally comes up with a hot potato before Mills nails him. Mills out of his Montclair State. How's that for an institution to play football out of? He's a great open field tackler, too. As a matter of fact, he's one of the toughest guys to get away from. He read the play perfectly and just zeroed in on Bledsoe. Uh, Bledsoe seems like he's having trouble catching the ball tonight. If you're a coach at Montclair State, you can recruit just based on what this guy has done as a professional. He can play for anybody. Second down and eight yards to go. There's 30 seconds left in the first quarter. There goes Bledsoe. Garcia Lane spilled him and had he not come up with him Bledsoe might have been off to one of those long gainers. If you watch the replay, Bledsoe Curse Bledsoe, it takes more than one man to bring him down. He can run over two or three guys, he's got great acceleration he just really just turns it on and that's what a running back is exactly supposed to do that was a nice run with great effort by Curtis Bledsoe We've come to the end of one quarter here in Orlando, Florida right now, the Renegades have the fans behind them and the Stars behind them as well Tim Brando, along with Billy Taylor, back here with you at Orlando. The Orlando Renegades leading the Baltimore Stars by a score of 14 to nothing here on ESPN. We're happy you joined us. Collier's in a heap of trouble. Mills was blitzing. Felder, the right defensive end, also got through. To make matters worse, the loss of five. It will be second and 15 coming up for Orlando. Tim, I thought that was a great call for a blitz uh, by uh, Coach Mora because uh, they knew that, uh, that the Renegades have passed almost every first down situation. And I thought it was a great call because they're not sitting back and waiting for the Renegades. They're going after them. Jackie Flowers coming to the bottom of your screen. That's Joey Walters to the top. Harry and Bledsoe are setbacks. Bledsoe gets it. Block out in front of him, thrown there by Tom Dornbrook. Garcia Lane finally knocked him out of bounds. As you watch uh, Sam Mills here, he's one of the best linebackers in the league. He takes on the block 
very, very good, exactly how you're supposed to do, and, uh, and stretches the play out and makes the play. Nice play. Nice play by Sam Mills. Slows him down a little bit, but uh, he was right there. Sam Mills, in my estimation, could play for anybody. Now, if you're Dornbrook and you throw that kind of a block and you get about five yards from him against that caliber of a linebacker, do you feel pretty good? You've got to feel good because uh, it enabled the, the running back to get around the corner. Third down, 11 yards to go with the ball at the 29 for Orlando. Nearly picked off. Bill Hardy out of Virginia Tech in his ninth year. As we mentioned, playing for the injured Antonio Gibson. And it will be fourth down and for the second time. Greg Cater will be called upon to punt. Remember what happened last time when called upon to punt. Tim, on that last play, if the ball had a little, been a little bit higher, he could have maybe went all the way for a big gain if not scored. But it was a great play by Bill Hardy. Garcia Lane is back deep waiting for Cater's punt. All those great years in the National Football League. Sure, a number of you are remembering with Buffalo, and he just did the number for Orlando. Lane is down. That's what it's all about if you're Orlando. Cater does his job, and the Renegades have done their job. There we show you, it hasn't happened. That is their bread and butter, and that's the reason they're behind in this game, because they have not been controlling the line of scrimmage. There are turnovers, and that's something to do with that, but one yard rushing is not what you want when you've got a guy like this. He gets almost five before Victor Jackson puts him down. Baltimore has not scored in its last five quarters. This offensive team has just had all kinds of problems. The, the bad thing about that is the defense has played so well for Baltimore. Victor Harrison up at the top of your screen. Fitzky at the bottom on second and six. Bryant playing a little juke to juke with uh, Randolph and company. And if you see this up, the throw block. Lupe Sanchez finally got him out of bounds. Not a lot of yardage for Bryant, but he gets an E for effort and an A for entertainment. In fact, he picked up nothing. It'll be third and six. If you've seen it out there to throw a block, well, give him... <laughs> He's got some guts, plus with a sore shoulder, too. Now, Brian really showed, uh, even though he didn't get much in the play, he could have uh, got thrown for a loss if he hadn't done that, Tim. You're looking at the huddle now of the Stars, and Fusina has had so many problems with his shoulder and arm. There were those that questioned his ability to throw long, though he has given us an opportunity tonight to see that he has thrown the ball long, though incomplete. Third down and six. against Orlando, it's big, big trouble for the Orlando defense when they go back to the sidelines, though it appears that Baltimore may be the, the guilty party here. On the center, uh, Bart Oates was parking, and he still is. But if you look at this, uh, one of the offensive guards did move. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Bart Oates, he, he didn't even move. I think he probably maybe uh, forgot the number of the snap, maybe. <laughs> He didn't move, but the ball did. <laughs> Four for 20. There have been some offsetting penalties here. Tim, this is another third and long, and this is why Baltimore, again, is five and six. I don't mean to hop on it, but this is why. Third down and 11. In this situation tonight, Orlando has come with the blitz. They do again. Victor Harrison. to get away for a touchdown. But the ball hung up just a bit, and Albert Gray was able to get back there with him and knock it away. If you watch the end of the play, Albert Gray really made a great effort to knock the ball away because this ball had touchdown written all over. Fisuna threw a beautiful pass, but it was a great play by Albert Gray. Landetto with punt. Victor Jackson back deep. Fair catch is called, and it's fumble, but he does gather it in at the 40-yard line, and Orlando will have a first and 10 when we return. It's been entertaining to this point. Orlando right now leads 14 to nothing. Our game with the Bandits 
contest coming up tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. A meaningful game in the Eastern Conference. Paul McGuire and Jim Simpson, some 75 miles for us tonight, waiting to bring that game to you here on ESPN. First down and 10 for Orlando. That's Odom. Henry Odom with his first pass reception of the night, just shy of the necessary yardage for the first down. Second down and a yard coming up. He might give it to Perry again. You're two for two with that guy. First down, Orlando. Mills made the stop. If you watch Perry, it's going to take a Mack truck to literally stop him because it's like giving the ball to an offensive guard. The reason I know is because when I was with the Giants, he blocked for me, and I know that he will run through any wall. Great pickup by Leon Perry. I was concerned in the Birmingham camp about his weight. He is a bit heavy at this point, around 245 pounds. But he is a blocking back, and you need that the ball at the 48 yard line of Baltimore and Collier going up top. And that's Odom again. Mike Johnson made the stop. Orlando has fine, found something over the middle. As you watch over the replay, uh, Odom just comes out, hooks up over the middle, and gains positive yardage. I think that's almost like a running play, but it's just like a possession type pass. Nice call by uh, Corso. We mentioned the problems offensively for this guy, Lake Corso, or I should say for Jim Morrow and, and the uh, and the Boy Right Sock. Of Corso's offense has had difficulty this year. They lost Miller, the running back. They've had their, their problems as well, injury wise. First down at 10. Plenty of time, just overshoots Flowers. Lush and Sutton were both there defending for Baltimore. The Tim, the offensive line is doing a fine job. They're giving uh, Collier time to throw. As a matter of fact, the receiver Flowers was late coming out of his break. If he had came out of his break maybe at full speed, he would have had a chance at that ball. And also, Tim, this is a nice drive for Orlando because I was stating before that they need to be consistent and use up the clock. Total yards, Orlando 135, but they've been biting off big yardage by the chunk. And as Billy mentioned, they need to come up with a sustained drive. Their longest drive on Monday night only took two minutes before the end of the half. Collier's in trouble and was sacked by Fuller, but I think Fuller got him by the headgear. Thanks, Matt. Number 595, defense. When things go bad, they go bad. If you watch in the replay, uh, William Fuller really did a great job, and it was just, it wasn't on purpose. It's just that's the way the luck of the Baltimore Stars is going, but he really did an excellent job of penetrating inside, and, and really uh, it was just a, a, a mistake on his part. He was going with great effort, but those things happen. I guess when it, when it goes bad, it goes bad. I don't mean to harp on that, but the Stars really are playing good ball. On the defensive end, especially. This defense has bent at times, this star defense. But when you don't score points, you're going to bend. And that's been the problem for Jim Morris' team. Second down and ten. Fuller again, this time without the face mask. Also Don Felder. Actually, Felder, rather than Fuller, getting through. Now, Orlando, though giving up the ball, should have a good situation defensively for their club on the exchange here. Did he do it again? Almost. The proper thought process, anyway, for Cater. 8.52 left in the half. Pritzky in the slot. Riley gets up the way. Freeman and Randolph both were there. Not much of a gain for the Stars. Once again, they'll be faced with third down and long, and Kelvin Bryant's down to make matters worse. They've already lost Willie Collier. They're split in that has some deep threat 
Here in Orlando, the news is good for Kelvin Bryant and the fans of the Baltimore Stars. He's up and all right. Apparently had the breath knocked out of him. His team right now trailing by 14. Alan Harvin has clocked into the game for him in his fourth year out of Cincinnati. Six men from here for Orlando. You see that. He found his man that time. Victor Harrison stopped by Albert Gray. With Bryant out of the game, it's a good time to tell you exactly what he means to this club. It's almost the Tony Dorsett rule, isn't it? I like that because uh, out of the 14 games he's gained over 100 yards, they've won 13 of them. And that's indicative of the Dallas Cowboys when Dorsett gains over 100 yards. They always win at least 90% of the time. There are those that have compared the stars in this league to the Cowboys of that league. And they're a class organization up and down. Colonel Carl Peterson, the general manager and president, has been congratulated by many. Chuck Fusina. Obviously upset with the defense that he was looking at. Don't fix it. Well, this club made no moves. Other teams in this league did, and perhaps they've been bypassed. That one got past Herbert Harris. I guess they knocked it free. The nickel back. You've seen it trots off, but it's time once again for Landetta to come in to put the ball away. So that's a third down situation, and the ball was right in the receiver's hand. Chuck Cena couldn't do any more for him. Victor Jackson is standing on about his 30-yard line, awaiting the punt. It'll be first down and 10 for Orlando at the 36-yard line. Once again, Tim, Orlando has great field position, and this game thus far has been dictated by great field position. Reggie Collier has come up with some big passes again tonight when this club needed them, but they've really been an opportunistic team tonight. They've made good use of the mistakes made by Baltimore. That's the reason why they're up two touchdowns. And that's indicative of a team that's on the rise. If you can take advantage of the other team's miscues, you've got a chance to win any game if you can play sound. Joey Walters, they call him the old man. At least Reggie Collier does. Leon Perry gets it. He's carried the ball three times tonight. And all of them have been just like that. I tell you, it takes three or four guys to bring this guy down. It's just like giving the ball to an offensive guard and letting him run with it. But he's got a little bit of speed. George Cooper, Mike Johnson making the stop for the Stars. Tim, anytime you pick up four yards or more on first down, it's a great situation. Second down and six yards to go for Orlando. Perry gets it again. Bounces off a couple of guys, including Mills. He's about two and a half, three yards shot of the first down. As you watch Perry on the replay, it just bounces off people. It takes about four or five guys to bring him down. And watch him bang in there. He likes to hit people. Look at him, just banging around there, picking up positive yards. Coaches like that kind of football. That's tough football. Perry likes that. Certainly this is what Orlando needed, a, a finesse club. They got him from Birmingham in a trade back on the 1st of May. This is a team that really needed running backs and blocking backs for guys like Bledsoe, and he has done the job in the two weeks he's been here. Third down and short, it's crumbled away. And it appears that it's been recovered by Baltimore. Mike Johnson got it. Mike Johnson's been pretty active for the Baltimore defense. That's the second uh, fumble from, from the center. I don't know if Reggie's not getting the ball or if, he doesn't, if he's not keeping his hands in, but this is going to allow the Stars to get back in the game. See, uh, you know, the Renegades have really uh, had themselves in a good position, third and short, and they, they really are, are allowing uh, the Stars to come back in the game. They've got great field position. Joey Walters trying to keep his teammates pumped up. Both teams have committed two turnovers. Is that a smile on Jim Moore's face? Let's see if he keeps smiling here. Touchdown to Bryant. There's a penalty on the play. Flags are down in the backfield, and I get the impression it might be roughing the passer against David Graham. Flag. 77 on defense. Well, I was close. 
James Scott <laughs> pulling the face mask. The touchdown counts, and Jim Mora is still smiling, isn't he? Tim, you watch the replay. I like to see a quarterback come back. He fakes the run, which draws the linebackers in and calls for the big one. And I like to see that after a turnover. It really puts a team back in the game. Now the Stars are back in the game. He threw that ball perfectly. There is nothing wrong with Chuck Pacino's arm. Or with Kelvin Bryant's ability to get behind the defender in the right situation. So great hands in the play, too. I like to see running backs with good hands. I'm not being prejudiced because I'm a running back either, Tim. Sure, sure. <laughs> David Trout with the extra point. And the Stars are in business. And they did it the way Orlando had done it the last couple of times off. Calvin Bryant with the big play reception from quarterback Chuck Fusina. They've got to do something now to keep this game uh, in their favor. They've got to retaliate right now. It's almost a replay of the San Antonio game. They had a 14 point lead. The Gunslingers came back, got a touchdown, and then right before the half, they sustained a drive and scored. Let's see what happens here as Parrish is dumped at the 17. Bill Hardy was there. Oh, on a kickoff, Tim, I do not like to see the ball hit the ground if it's possible. I thought that Parrish could have caught the ball in the air, and he probably would have had a better chance to make more positive yardage. And I think as a coach, you like to see them, them catch the ball, even on punts, without it hitting the, hitting the ground to uh, bounce, because the football bounces in different directions. And if you can catch the ball in the air, you've got a better chance of making positive yardage. First down and 10, Orlando. Lowers first down. Mike Lush made the hit, but not before the first down was picked up, and Collier had plenty of time before that 23 yard aerial was gathered in by Flowers. There's an honorable mention All American at Florida State, Jackie Flowers. I like that play because they really didn't go conservative. They came right back, and uh, the offensive line allowed Reggie Carr to have great protection, and he put the ball on the money. Probably the greatest testimony to the talents of Reggie Collier is the Dallas Cowboys. Grant, Bill Brad having taken him in the sixth round, though he had already signed with Birmingham in 83. He has exquisite talent. Bledsoe is caught behind the line by Moore and George Cooper. Buddy Moore, the nose tackle, and Cooper out of Michigan State in his fifth season. In the Stars' defense, uh, there's George Cooper who made a nice play. But the Stars' defense has played well despite them being behind by 14 points early. The Stars' defense really does rely heavily on a very active linebacker. Mills and Cooper, Jamison and Johnson really fit the bill. Second down. There's Smith, Jeff Smith. Close to a first down, about four yards away. I like that style of play because you don't have to get it all in one chunk. If you can just get part of it and just lower your third down situation, you've got a chance to pick it up. The middle is open as we've seen uh, previously, and, and uh, Orlando is exploding it. Third down and a long three, they'll call it for Collier. Four receivers in the game, one set back. Walters has got it, limbs up. First down to the 40th Baltimore. As you watch the pressure that Reggie Collier has, he really does a great job of getting the ball off, of seeing the pressure come from the inside, just really flicks it to the open man and picks up the first down. Excellent play by Reggie Collier and Joey Walters. Nice run by Joey. Joey's the old man of the club, and he's one of the nicest guys on the team. I really love the guy. Walters, in fact, has about 80 kids from a foster home as his guest at this game, and he does that sporadically throughout the year. Truly, the man of the renegade, the man of the USFL here in Orlando, is Joey Walters. Collier to Flowers, first down, and he threw it for at least two defenders that had an opportunity to come up with it. Otto Harris, Mike Lush, and company. He took the chance here, and it paid off. If you watch him, uh, he waits to the uh, receiver, clears the defensive back, and puts the ball on the money. He couldn't have thrown it any better. Great pass by Richie Collier. Uh, Tim, getting back to Joey Walters, the 80 kids uh, he brought down was from uh, the Edgewood Boys Ranch. And uh, Joey Walters is very... Uh, 
very community oriented and he does a lot of stuff like that. There he is, 30 years of age. He can still dance in France and he's had some ankle injuries in the last week or two. In fact, he was doubtful before the San Antonio game. And he's been among the best in the United States Football League. In fact, he is the best after that catch. They lead by seven with the ball at the 23 of Baltimore. 2.23 left in the half. Walters again. Garcia Lane in hot pursuit. Made certain he got no further. But you know, Tim, you have to admire Orlando for coming right back down the field. The Stars had just scored, and that really shows great character in a young team to be able to come right back after another team scores to get back in the, in the, in the game. Now they're knocking on the door. Only a couple of minutes are left as we have the two-minute warning here in the first half. The Renegades lead 14-7 over Baltimore. Orlando Renegades, they lead Baltimore 14-7. The Stars having just scored. He's hit six in a row as Reggie Collier in what has been a sustained drive, almost a carbon copy of what happened a week, a week ago. It's the Gunslinger. That's the tight end, Bob Mazzoli. R.D. made the stop. Fifth-year player out of Colorado was there, and they're inside the five now. Zola just came to come out and just ran a little out pattern, tried to follow uh, Reggie Carr. And Reggie did a great job of waiting until the receiver got open, put the ball on the money, and Zola made a great fine catch in there in scoring position. As you watch the secondary, they drop it deep, and when, you, when your secondary drops deep, you've got to throw underneath. As you watch Nizola find an open spot, and Reggie Carter is hot. He has hit seven in a row. Give it to Perry right here. That's what I do, Tim. They do. And he's to about the two. Mike Johnson made the stop. Well, the Stars have had enough of that. And they were ready for Leon Perry that time. Ball is on the two-yard line, second down and goal. Tim Zolik is in the game. Don Eccles is in the game as well. Twin tight end look coming up. I was thinking they were going to uh, give it to Perry again. They could, but if I was calling you, I'd roll out. But I guess if you got Perry in there, a big pullback, give it to him again. There you go. Inside and goes in standing up. The big guy can run, I'll tell you. I bet you Leon Perry is happy because when you're coming over to a new team and you don't know some of the guys, the best way to get friends is to be able to contribute. And right today, he's got two TDs and picks up some valuable yardage for the Renegades. He may use you as a press agent now. <laughs> After all, you used him as a blocking back in New York. Here. You watch him. He just follows Curtis Bledsoe. Bledsoe does a good job, but the offensive line really has got to get the credit because he went in, got in the end zone before it was even touched. And you know, also, Tim, I know a lot of people don't like that, but I like the, the end zone antics. I like to be able to celebrate in the end zone, especially after a touchdown. McCants and Harvard are back deep. Finally, horse collared at the 31-yard line. Making the stop was Fred McAllister, a backup linebacker. Jim Mora. He's got to be concerned now, Tim. Stately gentleman, but things have not been going well for him of late. Everyone likes this guy. He's, he's all business, but at the same time, a very pleasant individual to be around. The players enjoy playing with him. First and 10 at the 30, Bryant's got it. Mike Guest gets him out of bounds at the 41. A little extracurricular activity along the Baltimore sidelines. Temper is beginning to flare. Bryant to Freeman and Guest exchanging verbiage. Uh, 
Brian did a great job of getting out of bounds because you are in what they call a two-minute offense, and you need to get out of bounds, get as much positive yards as you can, and get right out of bounds. Nice job by Pacino getting the ball to him quick and letting him run away. You see, his numbers look a lot better off that touchdown pass to Bryant. Eight out of 13 so far. 42 seconds in the half. 21 seven Orlando. You've seen it getting away from some, but not all. He's down. And he did not get out of bounds. The clock continues to run. Or perhaps he did get out of bounds. Well, they call a timeout. Oh. First and 10. Harrison's got it. Right between three defenders, Cusina, through the frozen rope, and Lupe Sanchez and Victor Jackson sandwiched Harrison at the 35 of Orlando. 25 seconds are left in the half. Just one timeout remaining for the Stars. Parker's down and the pass is out of bounds. Litsky, the intended receiver. That'll stop the clock with 18 seconds left. Tim, I saw Fitzky uh, jump off sides just before the play, so I think the penalty is an offsides penalty against the Stars. Illegal motion, Brady won on the offense. Chuck Kaminsky and Kevin Kellett are having a little tussle once the play is ended. There's Kaminsky. He's a big one, too, I'll tell you. He weighs about uh, 295 now is what they list him, about 290, but I think he's about 300. They say that anybody who ever admits to 290 has got to be 300. On the right side of that line, Comiskey, Eatman goes at 275 plus. They are a load. The right side of that star offensive line. First down and 15. Comiskey still with plenty of time. It appeared that time the patterns might have been crossed up between Riley and perhaps Herbert Harris. Now Herb Eatman getting into it with Kevin Cullen and Cullen. Eatman is one tough customer, I tell you. He's built like uh, like a Greek god. He's got a perfect body. He's about in his 6'6 frame. He's just in his third year out of UCLA, and he is has got loads of potential. He's already all USFL, and I think he can do nothing but get better. 13 seconds are left now. Second down and 15. They're still not in field goal territory at all here. They need to get closer, and they do have a timeout left. You've seen it at Fitzky. They may be in field goal position now. They'll call the timeout. With six seconds left, Victor Jackson made the stop of Fitzky. But you know, Tim, I'm impressed with that drive because they've been getting it the short way and, and they knew that they only needed about maybe 15, 20 more yards to be in field goal position. And that's exactly what Fusina did. It will now be a 42-yard attempt. He got it. He weathered the storm, didn't he? Yes, he did. And that's the end of the first half. A very active one for the Renegades and the Stars, and their fans love it. Tom Meese will have more on the USFL coming up at halftime. We'll tell you now, Orlando leads Baltimore. Trump kicks off. Gary Parrish is back deep to gather it in, and we're underway in the second half. He's bottled up pretty quickly. Scott Werner was down there along with R.L. Harris to make the stop. James Caver also in hot pursuit. Collier completed seven passes in a row on that drive. You know, I don't mean to harp on it, Tim, but uh, a wedgie really is a different wedgie than what I played with the Feathers last year because if the if the first guy was not there, he used to tuck in and run. But now he's staying in the pocket, and I really have to give him credit for trying to improve as a quarterback. by Mills for the touchdown. Tim, we spoke too soon. Just like that, Collier, who has been victimized by taking chances from time to time. And Mills does the job, and he was simply in the right spot for that play. He looked as if he threw off the wrong foot. I don't know if that, yes, yes he did. He threw off the wrong foot. He did not read the middle linebacker. As a matter of fact, Sam Mills 
If you watch Mills, he reads the quarterback size. Watch him. He's looking right at the quarterback. And he just read the play, broke on the play, showed why he is an all-USFL linebacker. As he goes for a second interception this season and puts the stars right back in this game. Tim, the first five minutes of either half is so important. Coaches harp on it all the time, but really it is so essential to uh, getting a team off to a good start. Well, it was obvious the Orlando offense had its head sunk for the moment off that drive. We'll see how they respond to the turnover that led to a touchdown to make the deficit only four. The score not indicative of the flow of the game right now, to say the least. Sam Mills with a touchdown off the interception of a Collier pass on the opening play of the second half. Just that quickly, Trout earns his keep the second time in 35 seconds. So does Parrish. Dumped at the 17-yard line. James Caver made the stop. There's Sam Mills, Tim. He is the leader of this defense. As a matter of fact, he probably was... Um, was trying to initiate something at half because he came out and without even having to say a word, without even uh, less than a minute gone, they're back in this game. Boy, those that felt he was just too small to play professional football, well, he has ended that theory, hasn't he? In terms of stature at that position. Well, because he's short, he might be a disadvantage to some people, but I guarantee you, if I was starting a team as a general manager, I would start with, with a guy like Sam Mills. He's tough, he's a leader, he comes to play every game. Odom in the slot, the blitz is on, Odom gets it and fumbles it. Baltimore may have it here, they do. Buddy Moore, William Fuller were there, Fuller got the recovery. You know, Reggie did his part, he put the ball on the money, but the receiver did not put the ball on the way. It was a nice hit by the defender because he just came through the guy from behind and the ball was coughed up by Odom. That play has been successful a couple times. And, and Bill Hardy uh, did a great job. You see, uh, Mills is right there too, puts a good hit on him. He's the one that caused the fumble. I tell you, that's Sam Mills. I would, I, I would always, I'd love to be in a battle with him. As a matter of fact, if we were uh, in an alley, I'd have him on my side. Out of an eye formation, Baltimore now looks to get the lead. That's Dunnick, the tight end. And nearly a first down, about a yard shy. Randolph made the stop at the 13-yard line of Orlando. So at, at the beginning of this half is really mental. If you can get the right mental frame of mind coming into each half, I think you're at an advantage. Evidently, uh, the Stars did that. You have to remember that field goal by Trout off. A penalty that pushed it back five yards, a 42-yard field goal at the end of the half. Fitzky's open. Ran out of terrain in the back of the end zone with Jeff George out of Illinois State in his fourth season, providing the man-to-man -man coverage there. And if you watch the replay, watch the end of this replay, Tim. I really thought that uh, it was pass interference on the defense. If you watch, maybe we can see the gets He pushes off a little bit. Uh, it, was, it was Mike Guess, as a matter of fact. And I, I thought he pushed off a little bit, but maybe the ball was uncatchable and the, and the ref did not see what I saw. But uh, comes down with third down. Second down, excuse me. Second down and one. This is a good situation. Set. Herbert Harris is in the slot. Bryant has the first down. Victor Jackson. Jackson, we mentioned earlier, another one of those guys from an obscure college, Bowie State, small school out of Maryland. He was a Division Three All-American there. Got a tryout. Missed a couple of times making some rosters and then made his way into the United States Football League and has found a home here in Orlando. First down at 10 with the ball at the 12 yard line of Orlando. Baltimore trailing by four. They trailed by 11 at halftime, looking for the lead here. That's incomplete. You've seen it throwing for Riley that time. Calvin Atkins out of Illinois was covering. You know, Fasina has not had a bad first half, really, uh, Tim. He's a matter of fact, I'm kind of shocked that he's throwing with such accuracy. He's missed on a couple, but he's a competitor, and his arm has showed no form of being hurt or sore at all. You get the feeling off the 
play calling in this game that they wanted to show Orlando early that you see that didn't have arm problems because Kelvin Bryant's number was not called that often. That's Fritzky. Ron Freeman knocked him down. He's at the five-yard line. Remember, they can get the first down without the benefit of a touchdown here. So it will be third down. We'll call it four with the ball at the five. Lee Corso anxiously awaiting the end result of this play. This is a very important play, Tim. This is a big third down situation for the Stars. An old axiom, but certainly it applies even with 12 minutes plus left here in the third quarter. Ryan has plenty of room, and it's like taking candy from a baby. Tim, can you believe the Stars have come back in less than five minutes and taken the lead in this game? This is incredible. They went right behind Irv Eatman, the all-USFL tackle here. If you watch the play, he stays with his blocking very good, turns up inside the block of Irv Eatman, and just really just jogs in for a touchdown. If you watch the isolation, he just stays with his blocking, reads the play really good, turns inside, and really there's no one there to even contest him. I could make a touchdown running like that, Tim. You could also. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> just that quickly, though. The Stars have taken command of this game. It is a good game, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's also a physical game. And through the physical efforts of number 54, Sam Mills, the Baltimore team has taken its stars in the stratosphere here in Florida. To hear the first three or four minutes of the second half. Haver again down there. Tim, the graphic we just showed about Orlando being outscored in the third quarter, that is really something that, that has, has belabored their team all year long, as a matter of fact, because they come out and many times they were ahead of, I think, Denver 17 to 0, and the Denver came back and beat them. And they've got to do something about that. It's either a mental lapse or, or, or lack of, or the youth has got to have something to do with it. Now they've got to do something. They really have to do well, something right now. They got the breaks at the outset of the game. It's even down, I guess, if you're a and the breaks here in the second half the Stars have. Collier in trouble. Looking for block from Flowers. He gets it. He found the seam. Lush finally cut it off. But had not Lush come up with the tackle, it would have been a touchdown and a long one for that guy. If Reggie Collier saw an opening, he looked his first receiver on. He came back to look for a second receiver. He felt the pressure. He saw an opening, and he got a good block right there from Leon Perry and just kind of directing traffic there. Showed his great, great speed and almost broke this one. If he hadn't got a step, Tim, he would have gone all the way because he has great speed. Well, he wanted a better shield from Flowers than he got. First and 10 at the 45. Setbacks are split behind Gunner. Flowers makes up for it. Just the first down reception. That's what I'm paid for, says Jackie, though they mark him perhaps a half yard shy, and it will be second down and short coming up. Tim, you've got to be impressed a little bit uh, with Carrier, even though uh, he's made a few mistakes. He has shown poise and come back each time he has made a mistake, and I think that's got to make him improve as a quarterback as time goes by. Well, that comes from the top, doesn't it? That comes from Corso giving him the green light and saying, go out there and do a better job next time. It's a throwaway down, but Orlando has not had a great running game this year. Richard Trump in the game. Stopped by George Cooper. It is a first down for Orlando. They mark the ball at the Baltimore 42-yard line. But you know, Tim, when a team is behind and they manage to get something on the board before the end of a half, it can be a momentum factor going into the second half, and this is what has happened. Tim Brando and Billy Taylor with you here on ESPN on Friday night USFL stop here in Orlando. Tim, they impress 
impressive thing about that pass is that Reggie came off his first receiver and went to the second receiver. That really is showing me improvement as a quarterback because last year when I played with him, he could not have done that. And I really like to see that a, a quarterback go to his second and third receiver. That's incredible. Jackie Flowers, five receptions. Pretty good night for him. He's had some off nights this year. the Richard Crump that used to play with the Boston Breakers that picked up over 990 yards. You watch the replay, he literally just exploded into the line. A great job by uh, Leon Perry blocking. He shot the hole, turned on the acceleration, and picked up a nice gain. That's exactly what they needed because that's that's the biggest gain of the night besides the one that uh, that Curtis Bledsoe did earlier in the, in the night. Crump has been around, so has Leon Perry. Crump had some years in the NFL before going into Boston. His 10th season as a pro out of Northeast Oklahoma. Here comes the blitz, Tim. And it's read by Collier. Flags are down. Bill Hardy will be called. Defending against Bob Mazzola at the tight end. At least that's the preliminary indication we get. Although now it appears we're going to have a little conversation about it. Well, it does go against Baltimore. But Tim, I felt that that was, as you watched the replay, I felt that he did uh, maybe get tangled with the receiver's legs. If you watch, maybe we can see it right. Yes, he was. He's right there. Number 89, Bob Nazolik really was entangled, and maybe that little bit of uh, entanglement with his legs was enough to prevent him from catching the ball. I thought it was a good call by the official. Well, the great debate was on <laughs> between Hardy out of VPI and the officials, but it didn't work out. He's in the slot. Crump gets it. He's down to the one. Tim, I like Crump as a running back because he kind of set up the block. He turned on the speed, saw the hole, and picked up a positive three or four yards. They are first and goal right here. That's an excellent call by Lee Corso. Inside linebackers Mike Johnson and Sam Mills made the stop of Crump. We haven't seen a lot of running back shuffles by this Orlando team this year, though we've seen it tonight with both Crump and Odom used in the pass patterns. Harry has been a ball carrier in the game. He's in there right now. Walter's in the slot. A couple of tight ends in. Harry gets it. He's not in. Stacked up. Mills, Hardy, Fuller, and company all there. Now it's third down, Tim. You have a choice of either doing a rollout with giving Reggie Carter the option to run or pass, or you give it to the big guy right there, the the big guy that's one of the looks like an offensive guard, Leon Perry. I'd give it to him again, but either way, you couldn't go wrong because with uh, Reggie Carter's speed, with him giving him the option to either run or pass, he can make the touchdown. But I'd give it to the big guy. Go ahead and give it to Leon Perry. Three tight ends are in the game. Stop behind the line of scrimmage this time. Now, Tim, what do you do? Do you go for it or do you go for the tie and field goal? They're going for it. So now I would like to see Reggie Collier roll out because he's got more speed than any quarterback I've seen play. At least it gives himself the option to do either a run or a nice pass to maybe the tight end coming across the middle. He runs a 4 4 40. Right now he only needs to go about a yard. Fourth down. Drop and stop. Nice play by Reggie, but Sam Mills was right there. That's why he's all USFL right there, because he's everywhere. Now, last week, in a similar situation, towards the end of the first half, they gave this guy the option to run or pass, rolling to the right side. That time, he really had no option. You question that call at all? Well, I don't see what you could have done, because the middle of the line was, was definitely stacked up. They could not have run in the middle. They had to go outside. Maybe they could have run a sweep with the running back or something, but I don't know. You can always question the call when it's not positive. his way free. He may be set free for a long way here. Finally thrown out of bounds. And 
the 30-yard line by Jeff George. First and 10 at the 30. Dunnick, the tight end, with a first down to the 40-yard line of Baltimore. Lupe Sanchez made the stop in season number three out of UCLA. Sanchez was a cornerback. They converted him to strong safety, and some people have questioned that maneuver, though he is a hitter, and you like to have hitters playing strong safety. Well, cornerback is really a tough position because you've got to have great speed to go against the receivers and have good speed. I think Sanchez does a good job at safety. First and ten with a ball just shy of the 40. Alan Harvinson in the game one of the running backs for Riley gets it. A healthy gain of five to the 45. Ron Freeman made the stop. Now here's where a team like Orlando, and obviously they've made some mistakes to give Baltimore the lead that they have, but now we're Coming down to the last 20 minutes or so of the contest, Baltimore's the bigger club, perhaps has more depth, and your defense may be on the field perhaps longer than you'd like. Riley, that's my point. First down again, this time into the Orlando territory. They stop him finally at the 46. Scott Hutchison made the stop. Now the offensive line is beginning to take charge. As a matter of fact, he just ran, and there's just a nice hole to run through. Uh, the offensive line is finally beginning to take charge, and this is the, the star team which we're accustomed to seeing. Right now, the momentum has definitely shifted in the star's direction. They're doing this without Kelvin Bryant in the backfield. Harvin is in for Riley also in the game. Remember, Willie Collier left the game also in a ruptured cloud of Operating injured here, and that time, storming through defensively for the Orlando defense was Herb Randolph. Harold Randolph and James Scott were both in there. I like Harold Randolph, as a matter of fact, and he, if you see it, didn't even see him. This is the blind side of a quarterback. He cannot see what's coming behind him, and this is also dangerous for him. This could have been a big play for Orlando if they had recovered the ball. But it looks like the brakes are going the way of the stars, and they recovered that fumble. This is a definite second and long, Tim. Barrel Randolph, there he is. I really like his ranginess. He's got long arms, and he, he comes to play. Second down and 21 with the ball on the 42 of Baltimore. Bryant is back in, and there he goes. Down to the 20-yard line. Albert Gray saved the touchdown. Tim, this is a simple trap play. Uh, the guard pulls and kicks out of the end man of the line scrimmage. The running back reads it either inside or outside and cuts up. He, at that time, he, he cut up on the play and really made a great gain and almost went all the way. And that's the type of running back he is. He couldn't go all the way on one play. Now we're seeing the real Kelvin Bryant, Tim. Well, they gave him a blow a couple of times in this drive, and uh, he made good use of it. to talk about. I do not understand that call at all because the the ball had just about barely passed when he hit him. 22 on the defense. I do Turn not down. agree with that call. I don't mean to argue with the officials, but I do not agree with that call. Well, now they called Albert Gray's number, not Victor Jackson's number who made the hit. Now, I'm wondering if indeed it's Gray the guilty party or, or if Victor Jackson's the guy. I don't really see the the um, the even the great touching him. I don't mean to be picky about the officials, but uh, it was a great hit by Victor Jackson. But they say Albert Gray caused the uh, the touched him. Maybe I don't know. Right up the middle of the line goes Riley for a little or no gain. But you know, Tim, uh, the statistic on uh, Kelvin Bryant, he had rushed six times for minus two yards, and I had stated that he had not got in the floor of the game. Now he's beginning to get in the game, and now this is the real Philadelphia, Philadelphia star team. Excuse me, the Baltimore star team. Well, they really are from Philadelphia. I mean, they, their offices are still there. They bust there. In fact, this may be closer to home for them. They, they train only 40 miles from Orlando, so they may have more of a home crowd here than they would have you need it. A linebacker comes through for Orlando. Kelvin Atkins gets the job done this time. 
You stop and dissect these two clubs, Mills' job, and then you look at Freeman and Randolph tonight for Orlando. We've seen some great linebacking play on both sides. We really have, and that was a great play by Atkins. As a matter of fact, he came literally untouched into the into its casino, and uh, that was a really a big play defensively. It sets up a third and long. So the main thing they have to do now is not get careless, and they got to at least pick up a field goal if not a touchdown. You cannot fault the quarterback on that because the receiver was well covered and he literally just threw it away because he knew he had three points. And that's the act of a smart quarterback right there. Victor Jackson and Albert Gray were in the proper position for Orlando that time. As Mills, because it's it's he that's the guy that had to weather the storm of a, a penalty, go back even five yards farther at the end of the half. Of course, so iced him with the timeout, and he still came through to make it a 21 10 game. 34 yards away, he connects. So David Trott comes through again. We have a timeout. 27-21 our score here, and Jerry Parrish in a familiar spot here in the second half. He gets away from four would-be tacklers, and excites the crowd before being stopped at the 24 by Mark McCann's. The Renegades will try to make a move when we return to Orlando. Clock carries. Gets a yard or two, perhaps. Mills will get in on the stop for Baltimore. While we were away, a five-yard pass completed. Collier to tight end Bob Nazola. And it's now third down. And three yards coming up. And that's the end of the quarter. And at the end of three quarters of play here in Orlando, our score, 27-21 Baltimore. Welcome back to Orlando Stadium here in Orlando, Florida. Tim Brando and Billy Taylor with you, the former Giants and Raiders and Federals running back. Watching some of his old teammates now with the Renegades. Look at a third and two as we start play here in the fourth quarter. Collier in traffic again nearly throws the interception. It was a great play by George Cooper, too, really, because if he hadn't been there, with, with the pressure that was on Collier, he had to get rid of it probably before he wanted to. As you watch him, he feels the pressure coming from his backside, and he kind of gets away from it a little bit. He kind of has to release it just a little bit before he wanted to. That's John Walker. He was all over him like a cheap suit. John Walker is the guy who comes in on, uh, on passing situations for the uh, Stars. Out of Nebraska, Omaha. Brett Cater's had a good night tonight. He's been true to form. In fact, untrue to form for a first down on his first attempt. Got some rushing yardage. Garcia Lane is stopped at the 38-yard line by Bruce Byram. Chuck Fusina looking to come in to pad his lead and pad his statistics, which have been pretty good here in this game, especially from a passing standpoint. Fusina with 174 yards, but then rushing yardage is the key, especially in the third quarter. But see, if you remember, they only had seven yards at halftime, so they picked up uh, where the Stars usually pick up, and, and now they're looking like the team that won the USFL championship last year. This right here is drive is important to both teams. we have got to stop them. Calvin Bryant. Again, some activity at the end of the play. Scott Hutchinson made the stop. Hutchinson out of Florida. Had a brief career in the National Football League. One of the fine pass rushers on this defensive front for Lee Corso's club. A second round pick coming out of Gator Country, and there are those that still believe he's not yet tapped the full source of his talent. Second down and five with a ball at the 43 of Baltimore. They lead 27-21, just opening up play in the fourth quarter here on ESPN. You see that? Under duress. 
And he was wrapped up by David Graham. He had a piece of it. That was great pressure, Tim, from the entire uh, defensive line. David Graham, Scott Hutchison, uh, Ron Freeman, all of you were there. And that was really the kind of pressure that you need to put on Casino. But what I was going to state before that, they had a second and five situation. 43, 43. And that is what the Philadelphia Stars want to do is keep their second and third down situations to a minimum so that they can have a better sit better way to pick them up. And they've done that right. Th I think that's the whole key to the second half is keeping their second and third down situations down. Baltimore with a third and five. Casino, 50% on the night, has a touchdown, has an interception. He's been towing the line, 50% efficiency, and there's Jackson on the blitz. They brought the free safety, and it worked. Back to the 35. Corso had to gamble that time. He knew he had to stop them here, and they've done so. Tim, I watched him on the replay. He came through free, and there was nobody to pick him up, and there was nothing that Pacina could do. That was a great call by uh, Lee Corso because they needed it. It was third and, and about five, and they did a great job. And then it gets the punt away. Fair catch is called by Jackson. Orlando will have the ball at their 28 when we return to Orlando. The wind is gusting, and so is the game. Trailing 27 to 21. First Bledsoe is out of the lineup. You have to wonder how that might have affected Reggie Collier. The offensive thing will Lee Corso here in the second half. Marcus is down in an area where you'd have holding. Henry Odom comes up with it. He gets about eight yards. Bill Hardy made the stop. We've also had Willie Collier lost to the Stars. We'll Holding, 69 on the offense. First down. Joel Patton, the guilty party, out of Duke in his fifth year. I really hate to see Joel uh, have a holding penalty. I talked to him uh, before the game. He was... Uh, he starting tackle for the Washington Federals last year, and he told me that, that he wanted me to mention his name, but I didn't want to do it in a negative sense because he was holding. He said, Joel, switch positions. Oh, come on, Joel. You guys never get mentioned unless it's in a negative situation. <laughs> I told Joel that was the only time I, I could mention his name, so I guess he maybe wanted me to do so. But this is a, not a good time to have it because they need to put something on the board right now. First down and 20 now. Orlando with the ball back to their 18. Six defensive backs in the game for the Stars. Trying to throw underneath that deep zone, a three deep zone. Collier incomplete for Smith. Felder was giving a great deal of pressure to Collier. That third quarter is really the reason that that Orlando has had trouble all year round, and this is a direct indication of what has been happening to him all year. Lee Corso is going to have to go back in his grab bag and figure out some way to rectify the third quarters of, of the Orlando Renegades because all year long they've had problems. Well, the doghouse defense has come of age here in the second half for the Stars. Second down at 20, Collier. Looking for Walters through a bit behind him, but again, Collier giving great pressure from Buddy Moore, the nose tackle. You know, the defense is definitely at an advantage in that situation because it was uh, third and 20, and all they have to do is tee off on the uh, offensive lineman, and it puts them at an at at advantage. And the, the offense really has got to get in a better situation. 12 minutes and 47 seconds are left in the game. Orlando got a 21-10 lead at halftime. It's now 27-21 for Baltimore. Third and 20. Incomplete. Parrish, the intended receiver. Lush, along with R.L. Harris. The Stars really had six guys back there. It's awfully difficult to throw against that kind of defense if you're the quarterback. It's literally impossible. The only person I used to see do it was Roger Staubach. He used to do it in that two-minute situation with the Cowboys. But also, um, uh, the defense of the, uh, of the Stars is really coming of age. As a matter of fact, this second half may propel the Stars to go on and get in the playoffs. They're looking very good, Tim. Remember now, they have to be concerned with what Jacksonville does because right now, eight teams get in the playoffs. They have the ninth best record in the league. Jacksonville plays on Monday night here on ESPN. Garcia Lane, a dangerous maneuver, makes good use of it. Bringing the punt out to the 47-yard line. Things are looking up for Jim Moore and the staff of the Stars. Just over 12 minutes. 
minutes left in this one from Orlando. Ryan stops for little or no gain. First down play will net a couple, if that. Ron Freeman made the stop for the Renegades. Tim, I, I thought that um, it's easy to, to second guess up here, but I thought that Kelvin Bryant should have stayed with his blockers, which were leading him outside. Looked like he had a little bit of room out there. So now it comes up with a, a second and long, which is a situation they don't want to be in. It literally is a passing situation. Second down and 10, they gave him nothing on the spot of the middle of the ball. Yusena, Mr. Riley, a yard shy of the first down. Freeman made the stop. So a lot of things that people don't realize is if you have a second and long, you don't have to pick it all up on one play. Like right there, they picked up eight or nine of it, and now they bring the third down situation to third and one. And that's easier to pick up than a third, eight, or nine. Gary Liarinko checking into the game, bringing the play from the Jim Moore sideline. A couple of tight ends are in the game as well, including Jeff Rottenberger, a converted fullback. That's Rottenberger in the slot right. Bryant gets it. He has the first down. Spun to the turf at the 38-yard line. Mike Guess made the stop for Orlando. If you watch Bryant in isolation, he literally just follows his offensive line. David Riley, the fullback, makes a good block, and all he does is follow it and, and gets his weight going forward. And once the running back gets his shoulders going forward, with momentum, he really should not be stopped. But that right there was a tribute to the fullback David Riley and the great offensive line. In this half, Kelvin Bryant has been the Kelvin Bryant of all, and he gets it again right on cue, inside the 35 to the 32. But Tim, we are now seeing the Kelvin Bryant that we're accustomed to seeing. He followed his blockers outside, picked up a positive six or seven yards, and I'll tell you, man, he is a great running back. You watch him again in the play, followed his blocking great, it was an inside trap. He can either go inside or outside, following his, his blocker, Kaminsky, and does a great job. Look at it. Just follows it and picks up his feet, picks up a positive six or seven yards. That is the star's way of doing things right there. Victor Harrison coming split wide at the bottom of your screen. That's Kaminsky at the top. Second down and short. Riley, the intended receiver, the pass is built behind him. So and we're coming now to a third and four that really looms largely to the hopes of the fans here in Orlando. Any time that, that a running back or the offensive system can pick up four or more yards on first down, it puts the defense at a disadvantage because the offense can either pass or run. And now at third and four, they don't really know what they can do because the trap play has been good going inside or outside. Orlando seems confused defensively. Joe Ehrman came in the game, the tackle replacing James Scott. Ron Freeman, who called the signals, was a bit confused, and he knows that this is a very big play forthcoming, and he wanted to take a timeout and chew the fat about this for the moment. Tim Rando and Billy Taylor with you. The Stars have come through here in the second half, taking advantage of some mistakes made by Orlando. Kelvin Bryant has gotten on track. Right now, third and fourth. Joe Ehrman goes over the line of scrimmage. Now, he claims he's pulled, and we'll see. I, well, I definitely saw Joe Con Conwell uh, move. Offensive linemen are not supposed to move at all, so I definitely saw that. Conwell, the left tackle, would have been disconcerting on the defense, 74. That is not a good call. I don't mean to contradict the, the officials, but you watch him move. Watch 71. Look at that. That is not supposed to move. Well, that's pretty obvious. I would throw the red flag if, <laughs> if I could. But I guess that, that's a judgment call. Ali Corso would love to throw. That was not a good call, and this is what you call uh, having the brakes go against you. Orlando had the brakes in the first half. The Stars definitely are having the brakes in the second half. Remember now, change of possessions, touchdowns, those are the areas where you can throw the red flag out there. Ryan is stopped by Freeman. In his third year out of Pittsburgh State, Ron Freeman has been the mainstay of the Renegades defense. That was a great play because he literally just came through untouched. You watched him. He read the play perfectly, came out of nowhere, and just really cut him, made him have to cut back, 
and just just met him at the line of scrimmage and stopped him for no gain. That is a great play by a linebacker. Second down and 12. The ball just inside the Orlando 30-yard line. One first down, and we're in trouble. Riley. He gets seven yards. Jackson and Kelvin Atkins there to make the stop. You know, Tim, you wonder why the second half is going so fast, and the answer is simple. Uh, the Stars are into their running game, and that's the reason the clock is moving so fast. We're almost halfway through the fourth quarter here. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. And this, again, is where we mentioned earlier that the Stars, once they get things going their way, they can really eat up that clock and keep the opposing defense on the field for a long period of time. Six-man line as Orlando shows blitz. Here it comes. Do you see now? Uh, he was just getting rid of that one for his good health. Victor Jackson was back deep. There were two or three receivers that were in the end zone, but none of them were close to the ball. We've got uh, Marcus down. Hey, pass, 74 on the defense. Tough night for the granddaddy, Joe Ehrman of Syracuse fame in his 14th season. Jim Moore just loves it. And Ehrman, who has a rocking chair in front of his locker, will be giving it fits tonight. In fact, he may pound it against his locker after the events of the last uh, couple of series. James Scott is coming to the game for it. Hey, Tim, I'd like to take this time for, uh, to uh, number 77 uh, for the Orlando Renegades, James Scott. His grandfather passed away this morning, and we'd like to express our sympathy here at ESPN to uh, the family of James Scott, and we wish their, their family uh, condolences and uh, sympathy from our family here at ESPN. James Scott is now in the ballgame, replacing Irving on first and 10 with the ball at the 17. Freeman in on the stop along with David Graham. Not much room at all for Riley. He gets a yard, that's about all. Second and nine. There you see the time remaining at the top of your screen, and certainly not on the side of the club you see right there in blue. The defense has got to stiffen up right now because they're already in field goal range. They cannot let them get a touchdown. This game really does, with the exception of the score, remind you a great deal of the San Antonio-Orlando game played here on Monday night. That's exactly true, Tim. You've seen it with plenty of time. Tim Fitzgerald was off, but up the pass again behind him. If you watch the isolation, he had his man beat by at least two steps. As you watch him, he ran a nice pattern, came in motion, ran it upfield, turned it in. Jeff George, he had Jeff George beat, but the ball was behind him. As you see Freeman trying to get out, in on it, the ball was definitely behind him, but he was open. As a matter of fact, a completion could have had a touchdown, Tim. Uh, the media has been very unforgiving in Stars country to Chuck Fusina, and he has had not perhaps his greatest of nights tonight, but there are those that would tell you that Chuck Fusina of a year ago or two years ago would not have missed a receiver that open in that situation. Third down. Touchdown. And there's Herbert Harris out of Lamar, and that could be it right there. Tim, that goes to Fasina. He read the brick blitz perfectly, and the pressure was on him, but he threw off the wrong foot and still completed the pass. That is really a competitive, good quarterback. That was why he was the player of the year in the USFL last year. Shake it to the left and shake it to the right for Herbert Harris. And it's 33-21 stars as they look to tack on the point with just under seven minutes left and the fans are hitting the exits right now. Tim, that's kind of a shame because the Renegades really played a great first half and for them to come out flat in that third quarter, that was the whole game right there. Uh, Chuck Fusina. May have been erratic at times, but he's been on target when it counts. His team leads. That should be a great one in the Tampa Bay-Memphis game. Paul McGuire standing by along with Jim Simpson to bring you that one. There are the other games coming up this weekend, included 
That Monday game, Jacksonville and Houston, I'll join Mike Hafner for that game. We're looking forward to bringing you that one, a game that means so much in the Eastern Conference. They just get better as the season wears on here on ESPN. 34-21, the Stars leading, still plenty of time for Orlando. It's not over by a long shot. Parrish a yard deep in his end zone. Boy, has he been rocked in this game. There's Warner, Scott Warner, the Georgia star. That's why Vince Dooley produces great talent, talent that can do it defensively as well as on special team. Parrish really ran up in there like he really wanted to do something, but Scott Warner came out of nowhere and hit him blindsided. Those kind of tackles usually cause fumbles, but they definitely add momentum to your team. Single setback is on him. The past four wide receivers in the game. Six defensive backs, and Collier is just having all kinds of difficulty finding anyone open. Watch this hit by Mills, absorbed by Odom. That hurt. As a running back, I have felt it all the way up here. But Sam Mills is a great linebacker. Fourth and two. We know what they're going to do now, don't we? First down. Mills. Eccles, the, the tight end that spent some time in the New Orleans Saints training camp before becoming a Michigan Panther. Jonathan Sutton made the hit. Lock running with 4.48 left. Flowers has it. Wilford Morgan got the reception for a seven yard game. Second and three. They're now in Stars territory. Walters for the first down. R.L. Harris. Made the stop, but in defense of the Stars' defense, they're really giving all of that up. But as long as they can keep them, uh, keep the clock rolling, they're really all right. As long as they're keeping the gains very short and making them use the clock, the Stars are really in good position. Remember now, Orlando had to use one of their timeouts defensively, and the Stars by Collier's in trouble, and he's sacked. And Collier looking to throw on second and an eternity. Smith has it. He runs into a bus song. Larry McCoy just did an abdominal twist on Jeff Smith. This is the kind of stuff that puts people in hospitals. I mean, as a matter of fact, uh, as a running back, you tried never to get him. Not an enviable position for Reggie Collier. That's fourth and 34. What do you do now, Tim? Well, you just heave it again, I would assume. He's had to throw the ball 43 times tonight, and numbers-wise, he's had a good evening. But as we mentioned, that one interception, such a key. And then I guess the other turning point would be the, the fourth down call when Orlando had a chance to take the lead, chose not to go for three to tie the game at 24, and that, that cost them. Fourth down. Three receivers all to the lower portion of your screen as Collier eludes He got to the sidelines. Unnecessary roughness, number 25 on the defense. First down. Now that call could be debatable. Scott Warner is uh, giving his second negative to the first affirmative of the line judge here. If you watch him, I, I thought it, uh, that it was a nice push out by Scott Warner, who was not out of bounds. Look at that. Uh, 15,000 or so will stay in their seats off that call. Collier to Perry. Is moving in and Gary ducks at the 22. That Orlando could come back and win this game. Walters, the intended receiver. Wilford Morgan inside the 15 to the 14. First down, Orlando. Sawyer. Oh, in trouble again. The low setback blitz is on. Sawyer oh, got it away, but Smith dropped it as he was going out of bounds. Mike Johnson over there. Defending for Baltimore. He wants the pressure that's on Collier. He has no time to set up, and he really does a good job of getting it off. Takes a good hit, though. Mike Johnson made that hit. Be walking around as if he's all right. There's a fumble off the hit, and it's recovered by William Fuller. The hit was made by Mike Johnson, it appeared, the linebacker. That forced the fumble, and then it was picked up by Fuller. 
because you watch the replay, uh, they literally just came through, and you cannot let anybody come up the middle. See, when he comes from the blind side of the quarterback, he cannot see, and that's a dangerous position to be in. If uh, Joel Patton had not have made that tackle, he could have gone all the way. Tim, I'd like to ask you a question. As a coach, what can you get positive out of this game? Lee Corso, how, what can he get positive out of this game for his Orlando Renegades? Well, I'd look at the statistics that Collier came up with, look at my running backs and say, hey, you, you had something good happen in this game. If we don't make the mistakes that we made at the early portion of the second half, we win the ball game, just as we did against San Antonio. That's worthy. Gary Worthy in the game out of Wilmington in his second year. There are the games remaining for Baltimore. And as you see there, they have a few tough games. And uh, Jacksonville and Orlando, yeah, they've got some easy ones as well. So a so-so schedule remaining. Now Jacksonville has to go to Houston. You'll see that game here on ESPN Monday night. But then they have to go to Baltimore, to New Jersey, to Memphis. And all of those teams are fighting for the uh, last playoff spot. Jacksonville and, and Orlando, the two there. And certainly Memphis has got to be concerned about what those two teams are doing with their 7-5 record. But Tim, literally both teams can decide their own destiny because they, they do have a schedule that if they do win them all, they can make it to the playoffs. This game could propel uh, the Stars to get into the playoffs, though, Tim, because they played a great second half, maybe their best second half in a long time. Right. David Riley made the carry there. Orlando called the timeout with a last-ditched effort. Hopefully come up with a turnover and a miracle touchdown to close out the game. Lee Corso, the eternal optimist. The playoff picture remaining now. Eastern and Western Conference champions, then the conference runners-up, then the next four teams with the best records. And that's the situation that right now Baltimore finds itself on the outside looking in behind these guys. Tampa Bay at the top of the heap, and then Jacksonville and Memphis. And you look at Jacksonville of late, though they lost in their last outing, they've been playing well. Memphis may be the hottest team in this league right now for a 3-9 and nine team. 23,121 were just told the official attendance tonight. When you consider the state of affairs for this ball club, a pretty good crowd here in Orlando. They watched an entertaining game, though the Baltimore Stars came away with a much-needed win to defeat the Orlando Renegades by a final score of 34-21 to tonight in Orlando. Coming up next, it's Sports Center. For Billy Taylor, this is Tim Brando saying so long from Central Florida, where the stars are shining brightly in the USFL.